respect the name, getting good feedback. And yeah, I mean, good. sales, you know, I mean, I'm an independent artist. I don't have distribution and, you know, I'm not really signed to a big label. So sales are what they are. You know, I, I ain't going to put no numbers out there because, you know, it is what it is. But I sell a nice amount on the road um, and I'm getting really good feedback as far as like, you know, the um, the way the album is laid out, the stories behind it and the concepts. People are, are telling me it's my best work and I feel like it's my best work. And I haven't had anybody be like, y'all don't like the record. Nobody said they didn't like any songs on it. You know, hopefully they're not all being yes men and yes women, but they're, but they're definitely um, are great reviews um, coming from people about the record. Um, everybody's telling me they're feeling it. So there's a big contrast of sound between mm -hmm. Worth the Wait and Respect the Name. What really inspired that content shift? What happened in between that? Um, what really happened is I was working on both records at the same time. Like it, it was like I was just doing songs. Like I'd write a song, go and record it, write a song, go and record it, get a concept, come up with something, put it down, have another idea for something that goes with that. And I, I was just making songs. And then I started realizing that I had two different types of sounds. I had some stuff that was like a little more up-tempo and kind of funky, and I had stuff that was kind of like darker and, and moodier. So I was like, okay, I could make two records out of this if I put the songs together that sound similar and then just make songs to go with those two groups of songs. So Worth the Wait came first. It was like, okay, I haven't put out a record in a while. The concept behind Worth the Wait would be really good. And where I left off on my last record was a little darker feel. So I wanted to pick back up on that. Um, and then I incorporated what I really like about dark music, which is like moody guitar. So guitar is my favorite instrument next to drums. Um, actually, drums is my second favorite instrument. I should have been a guitar player. No, I don't know, whatever. But um, um, I wanted that record to be darker and have more of a rock feel um, because that's, that's the way the songs that were the strongest were coming out. Yeah. So I just started putting putting more into that, making that a, a uniform sound. And I said, I'm gonna do this as another record. I don't even know exactly what it's gonna be yet, but I'm gonna do some songs to go with that group of songs too, later. So worked on Worked Away, put it out. And I was just kind of putting it out as a bridge between the last record I put out and the next one I was gonna put out. I wasn't even like, yo, this is gonna be like a big, huge record. At first it was gonna be just an EP. And then I got to like 10 songs. And um, Issa was like, why don't you just do, I had like eight, and he was like, why don't you just do 10? Make it an album. I was like, all right. So then I did 10, and I was like, I could do two more. Make it 12, 13 songs. Bam, make it an album album, you know? Um, so that's what I did, put it out, and I got an amazing response for it. I was like, I, I didn't think that people were gonna be like that, you know, into it like that. And people were like, yo, we really like it, and you would like the hard, raw, you know, industrial rock feels, dark, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, holy shit. So if I can put out a record like this without trying and get attention, what could I do with a record I actually worked a little harder on and like put a concept behind and, and, and marketed it a little bit more towards people who wanted to hear all different types of carnage. You know, they wanted to, you know, I'm thinking it's time for me now to start exercising all the different skill sets that I have, you know, I'm like, I can, I can tell stories, I can be really personal, I can be really emotional, I can be dark, I can be fun, I can be funny, I can be, you know, sexual, I can do all of that. I was like, all right, so let's just make a record that has a little bit of all that on it for the next joint. Um, and then that's when the concept for Respect the Name started happening. And, you know, I started doing that. And Worth the Wait wasn't really as much of a concept, it just had a uniform sound. Um, Respect the Name is more of a concept record, which the songs probably don't sound as uniformly together as the ones for Worth the Wait. So it's kind of, I, I gave up the straight uniform sound for more of a concept for the uh, Respect the Name record as versus the sound that was really uniform and no concept that was on Worth the Wait. So that's kind of how it, how it came together. And um, both records are different. Um, I personally think that Respect the Name is my best work, but some people are saying Worth the Wait is their favorite record. Some people are saying go back to that, we like the dark shit, we like the hard shit, so who knows what I'm going to do next. I'm not going to tell anybody. I got an idea, but y'all don't know. <laughs> we, we, we don't know what the next record is going to sound like. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, y'all don't know what the next record is going to sound like. I agree with you on Respect the Name. Definitely uh, can feel the focus on that, and I like the variation of all the different songs between mm -hmm. the tracks. 
he has some pretty heavy concepts on there. Yeah. Like one of them, you know, is kind of a recurring theme, both, you know, addressing the black community and mm -hmm. some of the negative issues, you know, that they're putting forth these stereotypes that are coming out in the mainstream and you're really hitting that hard, you know, being really open and honest with that. Yeah. How's that message been received? Live, people love it. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, it, it's funny because in my everyday life, I've went through things that made me write those songs. And then when I write the songs, people are like, oh, they're so cool. It was like, well, if everything was cool, why did I have to write that song? You know what I'm saying? It's like, like the acceptance I've been getting from those songs is way better than I thought it was going to be based on the things that happened that made me write the fucking songs. You see what I mean? Yeah. It's just a weird, a, a weird juxtaposition to have your song, your life and your music go into. And um, I was just like, you know what? I'm going in balls first and I'm going to say what's on my mind. And if I get some critique for it, I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? These are things that I want to say. I want to start expressing myself in a way that would allow people to get into the mind of me, even if they didn't necessarily agree with or like it. And I know that um, there's not a lot of, you know, African American or black people who buy rap or listen to my shit or whatever. So I was like, I'm gonna tell these messages to my people. My people are black people, I'm a black man. You know, so these are things that I am going to say to my black people and most of my listeners are probably gonna be white when they hear it. If that's the way this shit goes, then that's just the way this shit goes. Y'all should listen to more of my shit or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it wasn't really a critique of just my people. It's a mirror for all of my people, all my black people, including myself, to look into and look at what we need to do to advance in our community because we're, we're selling ourselves short and we're, we're, we're like, um, we're really not doing for each other what we should be doing. We're not our brother's keeper. You know, um, I wouldn't have to write a song like Save My People if, if, if you know, my brothers were my keepers. And um, I've done those songs at shows and stuff like that and had a great response from black people. So it's like, okay, y'all see what I'm saying. So maybe y'all stop fucking with me now. <laughs> maybe y'all stop saying or doing the shit to me or, you know, doing the shit to yourselves and our people that maybe even write those songs in the first place, you know? Um, and of course, like, you know, I'm doing the songs and, and, and like my, the white fans and, you know, whatever, they're just, they're just in the moment. They're feeling it, you know, because it's real. They, they can feel the real. Like when I was on tour with Atmosphere, like a lot of people were like, when I did that song, when I did Save My People, it brought the fucking house down. It was just like, that was the, that was the one. And I was like, okay, how can I like come, you know, beat that? And then I did Addict and I had people crying when I did Addict. I don't know what things are calling me. This may be more than normal. So it was like, that's the only one that could beat that song. Cause like people were like losing their minds to the point where I had to stop the beat and do an acapella. Cause, they, cause I, I couldn't get past the lines cause people were like, ah, and I was like, hold on. All right, so let me just do it a little slower like a spoken word. Y'all cool with that? Yeah, lyrics, lyrics, lyrics. So then I'm doing it and people were like fucking flipping out. And I'm like, yeah, they're, no matter what color you are, if you're in, in the moment with what I'm doing and you're feeling the realism in, in what I'm doing, then it's gonna relate to you and you're, you're gonna feel it. And even though I'm talking to my people and there's you know there's a harsh way that I'm kind of coming at it, my people are feeling it, you know. And, and anybody who's liking really honest music, I think, is is really drawn into it right now. And that that's the kind of music I'm I'm more willing to put out rather than just you know talking shit about how fresh I am. I think I did that for years. I think people know I'm fresh. Now they need to know what makes Carnage tick. Right. And that's what I think I'm letting them know now. That's cool. I like that. It's definitely a powerful feeling. So a lot of us first heard you and got exposed to you to Idea, of course, Oliver Hart, DNA Records. That's cool. Right. It's Idea's label. So how did this passing affect you artistically? Ooh, well, it just, I, I feel like it made me fast forward into all of the things that I was already working on doing when I was working with him. Like he he kind of was like, he was one of the guys who was like, what you're doing is good, but I think you have more in you and I think you can do better than what you're doing. With pushing those messages. Pushing messages and, and being, yep, yep. He was like, and, and beatbox beats, he was like, you're a genius. Like I played the first beatbox beat that I made for him, which is actually um, uh, Superhuman Multitrack that's on yeah. Worth the Wait. Yeah. I played that beat for him when it was just kind of a demo. And he was, excuse me, he was sitting in my car like this. Mm 
then he looks at me when the song was over and he goes, you're a fucking genius. You need to be a millionaire. That's what he said to me. And I was like, damn, that wasn't the response I was expecting <laughs> to get. He was like, how did you do this? And I kind of explained the process. He was like, nobody's doing that. Nobody like, like your rhythm, how you can like even beatboxing for eight bars without going off beat is pretty hard to do. And I was like, yeah, I did this with no metric. You know, he was just like, I, I don't know why you can't be rich off of this. It's like super creative. It sounds like real music. It is real music. You're doing it with your mouth. Do it. What's up? He was one of the ones who kind of championed me doing my own beats because that was one of the excuses I had for not having an album out for a while. I was like, I don't have any beats. And he was like, well, if you don't have beats because you didn't make them yet. And I'm like, what the fuck? So he was always the guy who would like, you say something, he had a, a like an ant antithesis for it and he had an answer for it. So if it was an excuse, he, he, he would say, he would give you something that made it so it couldn't be an excuse anymore. And I was working on getting more to those points of making those type of songs that he was talking about and all of that. And um, I had a couple uh, and I showed them to him and, and he was like, this is the best shit you've ever written. You need to like keep writing like this. This is what you need to write about because you're good at it. You know, so he was one of the ones who was like, you know, you're good at this type of rap. That's what you need to do if you're trying to connect with people a little bit more than what you're doing or a lot of it more than what you're doing. And um, he was right. I did those types of songs and that's what's helping me, you know, stay in people's faces is those, those type of personal songs. So he was right. Um, and when he passed, it just, it was like, okay, now I need to do, well, I was going to do it anyway, but now it's more like, this is what he envisioned me being like anyway. So now I can, I can shine and have, hopefully have his spirit be like, yeah. I'm proud of, of you because you're doing what I knew you could do from the jump. And I can give him as much credit as I want, but he won't take it. That's the thing. You know, he when he was here, he wouldn't take credit for anything. You know, he was just like, nah, you did that. I'm like, oh man, that, that, I really appreciate you putting me on your record because now I have fans in Germany. And he's like, you did that. <laughs> so like, what, I mean, what can you say when, you, when you're a human being who has a human being like that in your corner? You know, all you can do is try to be the best you can be because the best is telling you how to be the best you can be. He was the best and he's telling me I can be the best. And he told, he told me all the time, he was like, you're the best. You're the best rapper I know. Now go get it. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Well, it's working, man. Thank I'm you. Sorry. making people cry. You made me cry. <laughs> One in a million at your release party. Oh, yeah, so. man. Fuck. I think I made myself cry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's, yeah. Uh, that, that song... Dot, 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 listen to it. That's all I'm gonna say. You want to get in cup with this unlimited bump rate in the cross faces, thumb swimmers, just listeners, don't count it us down. And whenever I let something incredible be like the only two on now, Jet Profit, not the best, but if look at that spot, look at that fly, yes, run it, might be the next coming. Melody go first. First born, heavenly metal, and kill them, but you're gonna wonder if they're gonna like the pieces. First was gonna be ever be seen, death to be seen. Police precincts all have copies of each one of my releases. Mama said about the mama, ask me to see those freedom fights, but I'll go home. No one ain't afraid to fight. There are preserving a day, helping people live longer lives. For the kids, it's like harness, not just the name, it's a way of life.